Hi, I'm Dr. Rod Shaw of Math Plus Academy, and this math treat is called Reptiles. Now, in a prior math treat, we talked about shapes that were composed of squares, and in particular called polyominoes. We had dominoes, triominoes, tetrominoes, pentominoes, and so on. And one of the triominoes, a shape made out of three squares, where each square touches another square, at least on one edge, one of them was the L-shaped triomino. And what we're going to do in this math treat is try to take those and tile them to make bigger versions of themselves. So sort of repeating tiles or reptiles. So let me show you how that works. As you can see, this L-triomino is two squares tall and two squares wide. So a question we could ask is, can we make the same L-shape but twice as big as this one. So four squares high and four squares wide. So I've made a little dot matrix here so I can kind of draw the outline of what that would look like. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then um, one of these would now be two, so we'll go up two and then over two. And so I have the scaled up version of that. Now the question is, can you use this shape and only this shape over and over again to fill this one with no empty spaces, no overlaps? That's it. If you can do that, you've then constructed a reptile that's twice as big as the original. If you can do that, try and make one that's three times as big, so six units tall and six units wide, and see if you can do that. Some of them will be possible, some of them may not be possible. So explore that space and figure out how many of these reptiles are possible of the different scales, and then we'll move on to other shapes. So let me just try it to show you what I mean by trying to use these to fill up here. So one thing I might do is I might start by putting a tile, an L-shaped tile, right there. So there's one of my L-shaped tiles. And, whoops. Now I have this space left to fill up. I kind of see like there's kind of an L shape here. So let me try and put an L shape there. So that's two of them. And then maybe I could put a third one here. So that's a third one. Now you'll notice what's left is three squares in a row. Well, that's not an L shape. So I have failed at my first attempt. Okay, so if you fail, you just start over. So I can erase this and try something different. Let's see. So then I'll, I'll still try this, I think, in the corner. And then last time I tried that. So maybe I'll try this. So I'll make that shape right there. So there's the other second L. Oh, there's kind of a nice little L shape there. So that's my third one. And look, my last three, they also make an L. So there you go. I actually did it. So I have been able to make the two times version of that using how many? One, two, three, four tetrominoes, or triominoes, L-shaped triominoes. So that's how reptiling works. Then we would scale up and try again, and scale up and try again, one, two, three, four, five times, and keep going, and figure out what the pattern is. What are the characteristics of this L-shaped triomino when I try and scale it up to these different size reptiles? Now, if you've done that, then move on to tetrominoes. And as I said before, if you've ever played Tetris, you know what tetrominoes look like, but there are five unique tetrominoes. Take each one, scale it up to a size two, and see if you can fill it up with the original shape, and then do size three and size four and size five. Again, you'll find some are possible, some are not. I'd love to know what you figure out in terms of what's possible and what's not. If you get through the five tetrominoes, then try the 12 pentominoes and see what you can do. Now, to do this at home, you probably want some graph paper, or I'll share a link here to a wonderful website called mathagon.org, and they have a tool called the Polypad that allows you to play around with tetrominoes and uh, pentominoes. So I'll demonstrate that here off on the side so you can kind of see how it works. I'll put a link here so you can get to it. It's totally free. You can play around, and that might be an easier way to explore this space of reptiling. 
So that's our math treat. As always, just have fun playing with the math.